Okay guys, so last Thursday we talked about um, kindness and being polite and respectful. The big thing we were talking about was manners. And we talked about like, hey you guys have been together with your family for several weeks. You've all been in the same apartment or the same house. You might be getting on each other's nerves and it's easy to get irritated with each other. One easy way to kind of keep the peace, to help people get along, is to be polite. Even if you're getting annoyed, it means a lot to be polite with each other. Let someone else go first in the hallway. Don't argue over toys. Share some food at the dinner table. Things like that. Say please and say thank you. And that's what we're going to jump in today. We're going to talk about what we say and how we say it. Now, no matter what happens, you're going to get irritated with each other. Maybe you and your mom get frustrated with each other, or you or your dad, or your brother, or your sister, or even your grandma and grandpa. You're going to get frustrated with each other. What you need to do is be careful with what you say and how you say it. So, if you mess up, if you do something that your parents ask you not to do, one big thing is to make sure you don't argue, don't yell, don't get mad. You know what? If you made a mistake, own up to it and say, I'm sorry, I messed up. But how you say it is as important as the words coming out of your mouth. Now I can say I'm sorry in two different ways. And one means you're really sorry, and one definitely does not. So if my parents asked me not to dribble a basketball in the house, which I used to do all the time, and I dribble it and they get upset with me, and I can say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Or I can say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. Now which one is a real apology? The first one or the second one? Yeah, definitely the first one, because the second one was very sarcastic. I may have been saying the words, I'm sorry, but the meaning behind it definitely wasn't, I'm sorry, it was whatever. We gotta be careful with how we say that, because how and what we say can be as important as the meaning behind it, right? So, if you do mess up, Saying I'm sorry is a huge thing. Saying please and thank you is a big thing too. Now it's really easy for me to say like, can I please play the video game now? You've been playing it for a while. Or can I please play a video game now? You've been playing forever. Like one, you're really asking with that please behind it. The other one, you're really kind of looking to start a fight or an argument, right? And then, if someone asks you to do something or does something for you, saying thank you is really important as well. I know it seems simple, but saying thank you is really important. So, we can say, like someone asks, it gives you, I don't know, maybe they, they hand you some more vegetables and you didn't really want more vegetables. You can say it one of two ways, you can say, Thank you, even though you didn't really want more broccoli, we're thankful for the food that we have, you know, our, our families are working hard to provide for us, and so we want to show that we're grateful. You also could say it like, thank you, but is that really showing that you're thankful? Are you really appreciative of the food that they gave you? Not really. You're saying it with sarcasm, and that doesn't truly mean that you're thankful. It's really like, ugh, I can't believe you gave me more broccoli. So, be careful with what you say and how you say it. And remember, your body language and how you say things can mean as much as the words that you say, okay? All right, well, going along with that, Peter Brown, as always, has a book that fits along with what we're talking about. So. We're gonna read, you will be my friend. You can say that two ways. You will be my friend, or you will be my friend. It's all on how you say it, I guess. 
Ah, uh, Lucy. Lucy was very excited when she woke up. Mom, I've decided I'm gonna make a new friend today. Isn't that exciting? That does sound exciting. That is exciting, Lucille, but how do you plan on finding a new friend? Mom, the forest is crawling with fun critters. Surely one of them will want to be my friend. This is going to be great. So Lucy went outside to begin her search. Good luck, Lucille. Bye, Mom. I cannot wait to make a new friend. We're gonna do cartwheels and climb trees and have picnics and go swimming and have a dance party. Sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Lucy's search got off to a great start when a nice critter invited her to play. Ribbit. Oh, oh yes, I'd love to join you. Woohoo! Splash. But things didn't work out. She probably shouldn't have done a cannonball in a, in a, a pond or a puddle <laughs> that small. Oh well, there are plenty of other critters in the forest. It didn't take long for Lucy to find another friendly looking animal. I'll just go up and introduce myself. Munch, munch. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to climb into your breakfast said Lucy. So Lucy climbed up in the middle of the tree to say hi to him. She wasn't trying to be mean, but she interrupted his breakfast. It'd be kind of like if you jumped in the middle of your friend's Fruit Loops and said hi. They might not like that. That friendship didn't work out either. Lucy did her best to win over the forest animals. She was helpful. Don't you worry, we'll get that nasty smell out. She's scrubbing the skunk. She asked a lot of questions. So, tell me what it's like to fly. Can ostriches fly? No. And she tried to fit in with everyone she met. She's going down the burrow and the rabbit's hole. Probably didn't like that. She's trying to chew some wood along with a beaver. But Lucy was starting to feel ridiculous. She's in a kangaroo outfit and she's swimming with all the aquatic animals and fishes, and reptiles. She came close to making friends a few times. Thanks for inviting me to lunch. Buzz, buzz, she ate the honey out of the, the uh, hive. But something always went wrong. Sorry I ate your house. Lucy couldn't believe how hard it was to make a new friend. She was ready to be friends with anyone. Well, almost anyone. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Squeak. Come back here and have fun with me. That's when things got ugly. You won't get any snacks unless you start liking me right now. You will be my friend. I can wait, she said to the egg. Can you force someone to be your friend? No, it's something that takes work and time. Lucy tried to calm herself down. Take a deep breath, Lucy. You can do this. You can make a new friend. Just be yourself. Doesn't anybody want to be my friend? The flamingos look unimpressed. Except for maybe one over here. This is hopeless. It looked as if Lucy would never find a new friend. Then, a funny thing happened. Squawk. Doom. Squawk. Squawkity squawk. Oh my gosh. Are you asking me to be your friend? Squawk. I accept. And that's the story of how these two friends found each other. They're doing cartwheels, drinking from a swirly straw, climbing trees, swimming in water, and having a dance party. The end. And 
I will see you tomorrow, and I will have a dance party all the way over to turn off my camera.